just looking today at uh, Ezra chapter 1 and in the first video I just mentioned about Cyrus Cyrus king of Persia who God uses in a very special way and uh, the second time that I'm looking at this chapter I'm just really struck by the way in which there's these very very important words I'm just going to read just here it says, um, from Cyrus, king of Persia, a proclamation. God, the God of the heavens, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has also assigned me to build a temple of worship in Jerusalem, Judah. Who among you belongs to his people? God be with you. Go to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the temple of God, the God of Israel, Jerusalem's God. Those who stay behind, wherever they happen to live, will support them with silver, gold, tools and pack animals, along with free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem. So there's this amazing understanding that Cyrus realises he's got a role to play. Uh, his sense of understanding a provision, those who are going to stay behind, they're part of the answer to, that they're going to be the ones who help supply some of the needs and there are those who are going to be on the front line doing some of the action and building. And uh, I was just looking recently at the Gospels and uh, my friend had printed out the various different accounts about the feeding of the 5,000 in the four Gospels in the New Testament. And uh, Jesus has in mind what he wants to do, but he speaks to the disciples and gets them involved. And uh, uh, he kind of, it always feels slightly like he's teasing them they don't really understand how this is all gonna come together um, they're looking at it at a very human basic level why don't we get rid of all these people send them off to find food you know we're really frustrated by this intervention we've gone away to a solitary place or a quiet place you know and all these people suddenly followed us and and we can't provide for them but jesus has in mind what's going to happen and uh, it feels like God's always got this thought in his mind about how he's going to accomplish something. And I, I love it because God always has a great idea and uh, he always has an understanding. I'm conscious at the moment that in Beirut, Lebanon, enormous grain silos. I saw a picture of this the other day, this huge, huge amounts of grain were affected. Uh, lots of destruction happened there because of a huge blast. And uh, it reminded me so much about the time of Joseph, how God gave this revelation of these seven years of plenty and then the seven years of famine. And God gave this wisdom to Joseph to set up these silos that would be adequate provision for the years of famine. And God always has a plan, an action plan for the years ahead. He has an action plan about how to get something achieved and done. And we can trust him. And sometimes our projects are things that we've got to accomplish, things that are challenges we may not know about. They're so huge that we, we don't even have the ideas in our mind to work out how we could accomplish something. There, there's, there's such great dreams that God has and such great challenges sometimes ahead that we may not know what's coming down the road that um, we, we would be overwhelmed. But God, and so we, we face that in our world today. We face challenges we never imagined we would have. And there are other things, I'm sure, down the line which we may have to face which we don't yet know about. But we can trust that God has a good plan and he's been working, he's been at work. Uh, he's already been uh, thinking how this is going to be all brought about and how we're we going to put things in place and everything else. Like that. We, we need to look to him for that wisdom, you need to look to him for, for that understanding. I've got some friends who cover quite a lot of different countries in their work, working with uh, children and uh, various different nations. And of course at the moment, you know, travel has been quite complicated for them. They're, they're covering quite a few countries where they go and support people doing children's work. And uh, uh, they came and met with us and uh, we prayed with them in our lounge and it was great great opportunity and i found it's an amazing blessing to have people from different countries come and visit us 
And I had some friends um, recently who were able to come and meet with us in our lounge briefly. And I'd, I'd connected with them, and they live quite far away, I mean, um, in, in Southeast Europe. And I thought, I'd love to meet them, but I just don't know quite how. Anyway, the way it worked out is that they were able to come through, and we ended up meeting them in our lounge and praying with them. And, uh, and this other couple as well, same thing. You know, God has a plan. Another friend recently came through. I haven't seen him for ages, but it was just, just on the route for him coming back from a holiday. God always has a plan of how he can bring things together, how he can connect us. And I feel like, you know, we might be challenged at the moment, but how do we make connections? How do we bring people together to do things when we're in such strange times like COVID and other things that make it hard to bring teams together? So I'm just praying that God would give us wisdom as well. If you, if you need to build a team and you're thinking like, I'm not sure how this is going to happen. But look at how Jesus brought together a team of unlikely people. How he brought together a community uh, of these disciples who they did seem an unlikely crowd, didn't they? I mean, what a team to try and start something off with. Those 12, so many issues, uh, such diverse personalities. But God makes something beautiful and lasting and eternal that we can never imagine. And I, I'm just amazed how he does that. How he brought together a team across Europe and much wider recently uh, online as we were grappling with issues around uh, not being able to travel we actually had an online worship event and a Christian event that was just way 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 better than we could ever imagine 60 odd countries involved we never imagined that would happen and God connects us I just remember praying for um, people in Canada especially the First Nations um, beginning to feel something of God's heart um, and connection there and I remember even having a book when I was a young kid of lots of the different tribes across Canada and I wasn't to know that um, God would bring someone across my path particularly into the team that I'm part of now who's from one of those First Nations communities where I feel like that real direct connection so God has ways of doing this and I, we know that it's amazing how these things can happen now with the internet and everything else but also God has ways of bringing together people and bringing together his plans and projects and ideas and teams in ways that we would never imagine possible. So um, God always wants to use us and he always wants to uh, bring about his good plans, his good projects, his good people. So I pray that wherever we are needing that to happen, we would trust him and see that he has a uh, something up his sleeve, he has something in his mind, like the feeding of the 5,000, like the construction of the temple. And he was always using surprising methods to bring that about. I pray that we'd just be stirred and inspired and amazed that God's ways are higher than our ways, his thoughts higher than our thoughts in those kind of things. And... Uh, I'm aware, I was praying a lot, you know, Lord, I really want to go to Europe, and I, I don't know quite how this is going to happen. And uh, how can I connect with many places there? And I found God connected me up through uh, through these online worship events with many people and many nations. I also found on one occasion that I was able to go to one country, and a local government actually paid for me to do that trip. It just cost me about £30 on spending money, but... The accommodation, the flights, and everything else was covered through an, offer, an opportunity that came up. And a uh, uh, big surprise to me, actually, in a place that I wasn't even thinking about a great deal. So God always has a plan and purpose. So I pray that we'll be inspired today. We'll have uh, surprising uh, experiences of God's provision, surprising uh, breakthroughs in terms of seeing his plans, his projects, his people, his teams, his ideas, his thoughts, his dreams come together and we will be excited and have stories and adventures to tell about how God did that and the way in which he worked. So bless you today and I pray that will be your experience as well, wherever you are, that you'll see God at work in your life and see how wonderful